And there it is, a thing of beauty. This is just one of the many things you can do with a Dutch oven. A delicious one pot whole chicken meal with the meat falling off of the bone. I just purchased this six quart ceramic coated Dutch oven, but before we get to this recipe, let's look at the process of determining which one of the many units available is right for your needs. Of course price can be a factor as coated cast iron Dutch ovens range from $50 up to a few hundred dollars but even after you determine your budget and the size that will work best for you there are still a few things that are important to know. For example a rounded bottom unit is a better choice if your Dutch oven will be used for a lot of ingredient mixing as a simmering pot while a flat bottom unit provides more contact area with the burner when used as a stove top cooking pot. There's not much of a difference between rounded and flat bottom units when using your Dutch oven in a conventional oven, but now good wide handles become more important. These units are heavy. You want wide and easy to grip handles when taking it in and out of the oven. In my case, I knew in advance that my usage would involve very little stovetop cooking with some ingredient mixing and a lot of conventional oven cooking. A reasonably priced unit was rounded bottom and decent handles tipped the scales towards the unit I chose. Here is a brief summary of my purchase. From experience, I knew that I would need a trivet for raising chickens and roasts above their runoff oils while cooking, so chose a silicone unit from a different source. But as luck would have it, I'm still waiting for the trivet to be delivered, so we'll use an old wives trick to elevate the chicken during this demonstration, and as usual, I'll post the ingredient list during my theme song near the end of the video. Let's move on to the demo. I'm all set up for uh, a meal I'm going to prepare in my new Dutch oven. Uh, these are the basic ingredients. You can see them along there. Olive oil, garlic powder, salt and pepper, and uh, lemon pepper powder made by Cool Runnings. Um, just some small yellow potatoes I bought at uh, Walmart. An onion, a lemon. Some carrots I've already peeled because they were looking pretty gnarly when I got them out of the package. Uh, over here, I've got a three and a half pound chicken that'll fit in nicely. And I've got my Lodge Enamel Dutch Oven. I've got to purchase this on eBay after much consternation, thought, and research. Um, I've left the, these little pieces, these little black pieces on here. I keep them because uh, you can actually chip this unit by uh, slamming the lid down on it. So when you're storing it, uh, I keep those they'll definitely come off for cooking. Uh, so stick with me. I'll, uh, I'm going to show you a nice little recipe that I used to do in a different type of pot. Uh, now it's going to be so much better done in the way it should be done in a Dutch oven. As the preparation is coming together, I just wanted to mention a little trick. just want to mention a little trick where I've taken, this is frozen butter, and I'm actually just going to push it underneath underneath the skin on both breasts. Just a nice little amount, I'll even it up a little bit, a nice little amount of frozen butter. Um, the reason I use frozen is it just makes it easier to work with. You saw how easily that I just pushed that in. Now that will actually permeate through the entire chicken as it's cooking. From left to right you see all the ingredients prepared starting with the carrots and mini potatoes cut into morsel sizes the lemon and onion cut into wedges, two tablespoons of the Cool Runnings lemon pepper spice with a teaspoon of salt added, and a premix of olive oil and the other spices to coat the carrots and potatoes with. Usually I would add a couple of sprigs of fresh thyme or rosemary, but I don't have any today. And keep in mind, the recipes like this are just a starting point. I prefer subtle flavoring, but all palates are different. There's so many things you can do with this recipe. So the chicken now you saw me stuff the butter in there, now I'm going to stuff the innards. And that's just uh, taking some lemon wedges and just in as far as we can go. And some onion wedges. Now I'm just going to pour right down to the depth of the cavity. We can get another lemon in there. Another onion wedge. So we've got this basically prepared with the butter under the skin on the breasts and this cavity stuffed. Now this has been patted dry. 
it's dry all around and that's uh, just uh, so it crispens nicely now one thing I do want to show you in my Dutch oven I've lined the bottom with a few pieces of celery just took three stalks uh, now this will keep the chicken off the bottom and the rounded edge is going to come into play here it's going to allow me uh, to put the chicken in on the on the celery it sits up off of the bottom uh, right in the middle because that's based on the size of the chicken it sits right in the middle I can't tip up much more because it will slide um, and all of the greases and the undesirable oils that come from the chicken are going to go down to the bottom part now I'm going to fill all around with vegetables but the vegetables themselves are now in the bottom of the pan where it starts to curve up and so they're not going to be uh, cooking in the oil but my next step here season the chicken and not uh, you really here you're trying not to miss any part of it if I have to add more I certainly will but I'm going to rub this on make sure that every part of this is covered I've uh, taken the carrot I've chopped all the carrots and potatoes they're ready to go in but instead of drizzling the vegetables while they're in the uh, Dutch oven I'm actually I've mixed uh, salt pepper a little pinch of the uh, lemon pepper spicing garlic powder and olive oil and I'm actually going to mix it up pre-mix it all coat them completely before I put them in there I find that the results are a lot better than uh, drizzling on top it's very simple simple procedure just making sure that everything is coated before it goes in there spread these out nice and even and then the onion the leftover onion that didn't go in the cavity we'll let that sink down through so that's what it looks like in, it's going into the oven now with the lid on for um, an hour and a half at 375 so after a, an hour and a half that's what it's looking like now it's going to go in for about half an hour without the lid this brings us to the finished product I showed at the beginning of this video a lightly seasoned, perfectly cooked, and absolutely delicious whole chicken one-pot meal. For my next video, we'll be making raisin bread in our Sunbeam bread maker. I hope to see you then. When the stars won't shine for you, your dreams turn black and blue. On those dark nights, you'll be alright, I'll be right there with you. Together we'll see it through. When the stars won't shine for you, your dreams turn black and blue. On those dark nights you'll be alright, I'll be right there with you. Together we'll see it through.